All right, I think we'll get started. People may trickle in, but just to try to get you off to the next part of the evening on time. Uh, so we are five-sevenths of the, the ELC <laughs> team. Uh, we'll just take a minute to introduce ourselves to start, and then we'll go through a little bit about our program and our philosophy and approach to working with young children and setting up our environment and what a typical day looks like in the ELC. So my name is Nicole Terrio. I'm uh, one of the lead pre-K teachers and I'm the coordinator for the Early Learning Center. And this is my fourth year at PBS. I've been teaching for about 14 years, mostly with this age group, but all the way up through second grade, uh, largely on the East Coast before I moved here to the West Coast. And I have a master's in early childhood and museum education. Hi, I'm Lauren Stronzak. I am the Pre-K East Associate and the ELC Coordinator. This is my fifth year teaching and my second year at PBS. And I have a master's in education with concentration in bilingual education and English as a second language. Uh, I'm Zach Goldenberg. Uh, I'm a learning specialist at PBS. I'm up here in all three classrooms. Uh, it's my third year at PBS. It's my ninth year teaching. Um, yeah, I'm from St. Louis, so not as far east as Nicole, but um, yeah, that's me. <laughs> I'm Stephanie Hallcoster. I am the street school lead teacher. This is my fourth year um, teaching at PBS. I've been teaching for about 18 years. I've taught K through up to about third grade, and um, mostly on the West Coast, um, some gifted schools. I have worked as SEL specialist in some of the gifted schools. Um, and right now I am continuing my education and I have a supervisor permit. And I'm Marcelino Perez. This is my second year here at PBS. Six year six years of work in like classroom settings and different sort of different things. And uh, yeah, I'm a Bay Area person. Bay Area local. So. <laughs> uh, and I just want to Leslie to get a chance to give a little wave in the back. Uh, so Leslie Richardson, who's the director of preschool through the second grade at PBS. So we'll get started. Welcome for you, those of you still coming in. Just find a seat or stand in the back. Um, we're just going to talk a little bit about the ELC at PBS. So uh, we begin our presentation with the image of the child. At PBS ELC, we believe that young children are competent, curious, and prepared to learn. They are full of potential, have interest in relationships with themselves and the world around them, that they learn and develop through play and exploration, and in partnership with teachers and friends. They also learn by imitating what they see in the world to make sense of the world around them. As you can see, um, we have two pictures, one where the children are playing construction and they're figuring out how water um, travels, and in the other picture we have children imitating their teachers, they're playing school. <laughs> um, children also work together. They learn through helping each other through collaboration and inspiration. Teachers are models, guides, and observers. They observe daily and they think of interesting provocations to inspire creativity, self-expression, and skill acquisition. We learn together with the students and we co-create and construct curriculum. Uh, we're stepping to talking about the role of the teacher that leads right into documentation. Uh, all of us will take notes um, Pictures, uh, we'll, um, that's where I'm looking for. We'll, we'll take the notes of what the kids are saying about their work and transcribe it so we can save that for them as a record. And then we'll often put it up on the wall, which will allow an opportunity for sometimes the students might be like, oh, what was that about, Miss Terrio again? And you can reflect on that. It allows the parents to also see what their students are working on when they enter the classroom. And then we also put the documentation also ends up in the portfolio, which is the kids love them. They look at them. It's a record of their entire year here at PBS uh, that goes home with them at the end of the school year. It also becomes 
the focus of the conference at the end of the school year. Your, your child in the ELC will lead you through their year and they'll have stories to tell about all the pictures. They're very image heavy, but there's also lots of um, work that has the documentation from the teachers as well lives there as well. Um, our environment is also built with the children in mind. If you look around, everything is very low. It's to the children's uh, size and so that they can their space is easily accessible for them. Uh, we try to make things as aesthetically pleasing as possible every day. That might change from uh, from what's on the shelves or the provocations that we set up every day. That they the week might have a lot of provocations, and that also might rotate throughout um, the week as well. Since we're led by the children's desires, if the middle of the week someone might really be into something, and we might switch up what we were going to do and build something, a new provocation around the child's interest. And then we also, this is very color coordinated, but we like that vibe that it's very, the kids enjoy that, they, the familiarity, and they can access all the materials, they know what they're getting into, and they can be independent on their own, which is what we're striving for. And then uh, we obviously will still help them out, but we want them to be able to take advantage of an idea on their own too when they uh, and they want to, we want them to know their environment. So what does a day in the ELC look like? So upon arrival, students take care of their morning responsibilities, which include signing in, unpacking their backpacks, and washing their hands. And afterwards they're free to explore the space and engage in um, a provocation that is set out on the table. And in the ELC, we practice responsive classroom, and an example of that is our morning meeting. And our morning meetings are a really engaging way to start the day. They build community um, and really set the children up for success. And a morning meeting looks like everyone will be sitting on the carpet, and we go around in a circle and greet everybody, share important things that are going on in our lives and read our morning message, which is crafted by the teacher and it serves as a preview for what the children should expect that day. <coughs> and so in our indoor exploration gives the students an opportunity to explore the classroom materials and the provocations that are set out. Um, teachers set up provocations that allow children to work on cognitive, social, creative, fine motor skills. And while the children are playing and engaging in these provocations, it's really important to note that they are building the foundational literacy skills and math concepts. So children during this time will work on sensory activities, drawing and writing. They also can work on dramatic play or cooking and block building. This is a picture of Kate and Emily, they're preparing um, mac and cheese bites for our Friendsgiving that takes place in November, and it's a uh, time for all three classes to join together um, in a meal. <coughs> and during our outdoor exploration, we really view the outdoor space as an extension of our classroom, where the children continue to learn and grow and build their cognitive and social skills. So outside, children, as you can see, play in the sand. They play with water, some sensory activities. Um, and they also, it's a really good place for them to build their gross motor activities like scooter boards and parachute play. So our snack and lunch um, are a time for children to build conversational skills and really practice self-help like you know, making conversation, cleaning up after themselves, opening containers, um, and it really builds a strong sense of community. Um, our lunch is at from 11.30 to 12.15, and the children are expected to bring their own lunch to school. We do not provide that. We do provide snack. Um, and then after lunch, we go to rest. We, the children here are setting up their rest mats, and it's just a time for them to have relaxation and just a time to reset. I'm going to talk a little bit about project work, which is one of my favorite parts about working in the ELC. So, as you've heard, there's a lot of choice in our day. I'm going to try not to 
get in the shadows. Uh, there's a lot of choice in our day. Children are free to choose a lot of the different activities that they do throughout the day. And we teachers are really closely listening to them, watching them, paying attention, as Zach said, taking pictures, writing down what they're saying, and then reflecting back on that. And from that, our projects emerge. So we pick out the threads of what are the kids really interested in? What are they trying to figure out? What questions are they asking? What is something that's catching fire among the children that we can delve into a little bit deeper? I'm going to give you two examples of that. Uh, this is a project from a few years ago that we like to call the door investigation. And it really came from one child noticing something and asking a question about it. And the teacher's picking up on that, bringing it to the class to talk about, and it evolved into a months long investigation. So one day when a child was trying to open the door to the classroom, she said, why is this side of the door heavier than the other side? So we brought that question to the children and they had all sorts of theories and ideas about why this might be. We decided we needed to look more closely at doors. So we went around campus with our clipboards and our papers and our pencils we looked at different doors, we practiced opening them from different sides and tried to figure out what was going on with the handles and with the different mechanisms, the hinges. And what the children concluded was that a door with a bar handle, a push bar handle, was much easier to open than a door with a different kind of handle. What they ended up doing is creating a persuasive video that they sent to Dr. Erickson to try to influence him and ask him if he could install push bar handles in the ELC. <laughs> Another project is what we refer to as the name graph project. And this is actually something that came out of a social conflict that happened in the classroom. So there were two sort of special chairs in our morning meeting area. And the children would argue over whose turn it was to sit in the chairs. And so we said, well, how, how do we solve this problem? We put it to them, and someone suggested, well, you should make a list. And we teachers said, well, how do we decide what the order of the list is? And someone said, it should be alphabetical. And then, of course, they wanted to, you know, many of the other children wanted to know what's alphabetical. So we talked about what that meant, and uh, in our classrooms, children's names are up on a lot of different things, on the cubbies, on their portfolios, on signs around the classroom. So we looked at the cubbies and we explained that those names were in alphabetical order, that it followed the order of the alphabet. And so we said, we'll put our names in alphabetical order to take turns with the chair. And then a child said, well, what happens when we get to a letter and there's no name? And someone said, well, I bet there's someone in the other class that has a name with that letter. Uh, and what this emerged into was we actually surveyed the entire school about their names. For each grade, we made a graph graphing the most popular letter to start a name at each grade level. Um, we asked the teachers, the children asked their parents, uh, so we ended up with all these graphs that depicted um, what the popu most popular letter to start a name in each grade was. Um, and these projects, as you can see, give the children a chance to go beyond the walls of the ELC to explore our campus a little bit, to talk to some of the older students, to talk to other teachers, at the school um, and practice that sort of public speaking, practice gathering data, reflecting on it, and trying to figure out the answer to something. And we have a variety of specialists that come in throughout the week. Sorry, I just wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> we have a variety of specialists that come up, come throughout the week, such as you know we have PE teacher, we have music throughout the week, um, as well as a, libra a librarian that comes in with some different books and they help contribute to the learning every single day, as well as we have other teachers that come in if we need help, such as you know, science um, and certain things. Um, for example, one of our, or our students were really interested in spiders. They saw a bunch of spiders around the campus, and they were looking around, and so we asked our science teachers if they could help us out, and they brought over <coughs> like, some model spiders that they could look at and see, as well as we asked our librarian to help us out as well, and she brought over a bunch of different materials and books that they could all look through and uh, delve further into their investigation. And we really encourage parent volunteers, you all, caretakers, whoever, to be really involved in the classroom. The children absolutely love seeing new faces, new adults. They think it's super special, especially if 
you know, one of the students that, you know, whoever it is, the caretaker comes in and is a part of the classroom. If you have any, you know, special talents, um, something from your culture, any traditions that you'd like to share with them, they really, really love that and really encourage it. And it's a chance for you also to see them in their classroom, you know, be really a part of it as well. So that's a little bit about our days here in the ELC. And we have about 10 minutes uh, for questions before you move on to dinner with Dr. X. Anyone is wondering? Anything. Did they install the push bar on the door? We have not. We have not. <laughs> that. Uh, you know, I'm sure it's down there on the facilities list somewhere. It's just not. not Bring it up at dinner. Not the yeah. top priority. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah. Yeah. We also. If people are not comfortable uh, or don't want to ask in front of the whole group, we you know we're, we can we're stand up here. here. So if, if, if what time is the morning time. arrival and what time is the end of the day? Yeah. So we have um, a window for morning arrival from 8:10 to 8:30, and then 8:30 is when we sort of you know, really get settled in and have morning meetings and things like that. Um, and then at the end of the day, we also have a little bit of a window, 2:45 to 3 is pickup, um, and then there's optional uh, aftercare from 3 to 5. Mm -hmm. Preschool is 1.30. Right. Yeah. For, uh, Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Same start time. Same start time. So, did, did you mention that uh, lunch was not provided or was provided? Yeah, so or we provide that? snack oh. and children in the ELC bring their own lunch. Bring their own. Okay. And then starting in kindergarten, you have the option of um, Hot lunch purchasing through a yeah, school lunch program. And did the preschoolers have an option for aftercare? Uh, they after do, yeah. So, that's also. Um, so that's starting at their end time, so from 1.30 till 5. Um, yeah. okay. And can you describe what happens in that? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it's a lot, I don't know if it's more, it's a lot of the same what's happening during the morning, a lot of free play and choice. There's also enrichment classes. Yeah, so and the enrichment classes will are generally 45 minutes. It's right at the end of their school day. So preschool would be 1.30 to 2.15, and then pre k enrichment classes will be 2.45 to 3.30. And so we have, like this this quarter, we have um, science on Mondays, cooking on Tuesdays, art on Wednesdays, and a hip hop class on Thursdays. So we hire outside vendors to come in and teach those. Also, it's nice, it creates a little different dynamic with the students, because they do get to cross. It's, you, after <laughs> the, the last pre-K class is done, you do have preschoolers and kids from both pre-K classes all in the same, so it is, it uh, gives a little bit different vibe there as well, which is, I think, is cool. <laughs> Can you choose, like, if you just want to do, like, cooking or... Yeah, mm -hmm. and then yeah absolutely. Yep. It up a little bit? Okay. Yep. So those those go out. Um, the ELC aftercare coordinator will send out an email with me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> or Zach. Um, we'll send out an email um, in the beginning of each quarter. So there's three. We do um, fall classes, winter classes, and spring classes. And some stay the same, some change, and you'll be able to sign up for that um, all online. Yeah. What, what kind of things are you looking for for a student coming out of the ELC? So a lot of what we're working on is how to be part of a group, right? How, how to talk to other people, how to listen to other people, how to solve conflict, when it when it arises, um, how to work together to accomplish a goal. So a lot of those social emotional skills, um, how to deal with feelings, particularly strong feelings. Um, you know how to identify them, and that you know that's something that they're working on all through their careers at PBS. Right? Still working on it myself. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think we just want we want them to be curious about. The world. We want them to know that their questions are valid, that they are, have the tools to find the answers to things, and that it's exciting to do that. What does the rest time look like after lunch um, for preschool and pre-K? Um, in preschool and pre-K, um, we send out maps. Um, in preschool, some of the children actually do fall asleep, especially at the beginning of the year. Um, and it, for those who do not sleep, we offer books, and I think in pre-K they can draw. Yeah. And we play quiet music, or sometimes we'll play How long of a time is the best? 40? Um, yeah, it's about yeah. 40. 40. I mean, it sort of depends on when they finish lunch, when they finish lunch 
if they're sleeping or not. Um, so it's a little bit fluid. It's also, you know, if everyone is having a really hard time sort of quietly resting, you know, maybe we, we get up a few minutes earlier. If everyone really seems like they're really chilled out and they could benefit from 10 more minutes, then, you know, we have some flexibility and we're, we try to be um, sort of responsive to the children. What about your quarters? So um, does your program continue through the year or you have a summer sort of a quarter that's off? Or? Yeah, so we run on an academic year schedule. Um, this year for the first time there is a summer program at PBS that is starting with incoming kindergartners. Is that yeah. right, Leslie? Yes. So nothing for preschool? Nothing. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. So what is your summer break then? Uh, so we end at the beginning of June and we come back like the second or third week of August. Third week of August. Oh, you said August. Oh, I apologize. Yes, <laughs> August. Yeah. 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 Well, the winter breaks. So we have two weeks in December. We have one in February because we coincide with the public school, uh, pub, some of the public schools and private schools in the area. We have a spring break, and then um, we have the Thanksgiving. We have about oh, we have a week. The students have a week in Thanksgiving. We, we have two <laughs> days. <laughs> but, um, so that's great. Yeah. Um, apologies if you covered this at the very beginning. Do the students in the ELC have a buddy or someone that um, is assigned to them from an older grade? Uh, so in the pre-K, we're buddies with the fourth graders, and we see them once a rotation. Mm -hmm. So our school is on a six day plus a fixed today rotation. So Monday through Thursday, we go through the letters A through F, and then Friday, the fixed Friday, um, instead of a Monday through Friday schedule. So a number of schools do that. It helps sort of balance out the, the specialist schedules a little bit better. Um, so once a rotation, our pre-K kids meet with their fourth grade buddies. And uh, in the preschool, third graders are, it's not a one-on-one -on -one matchup, but they come to the ELC and play with preschool. When the students get to kindergarten, the school, the upper grade, has a family program, and that's that's where they will get a they'll have a group that they'll stay with as long as they're at PBS. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know, Leslie, do they take the feedback from buddies and pre-K for that at all? Or no? Yes. They do? Yes. Okay. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Do you, do you get matched with a family before you start to? I heard yes. 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 Yeah. Is so that is that another child that will be in your program, or is it a yeah. child? Yeah. In the in the yeah. program. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 How often do you get exposure to uh, you know the science and Spanish and, and oh. the normal uh, sort of the A through F? Like how frequent is the exposure to those sort of specialties and experiences? So uh, we see the PE teachers twice a rotation. We see the Spanish teacher once, the librarian comes to read once, um, and then as Marcelino said, the um, science teachers and art teacher, they are more on a consulting basis because we, we're doing a lot of that work on a daily basis mm -hmm. in here. You know, there's an art provocation out every single day. There's some sort of scientific inquiry every single day. So how do you measure or think about the progress of a three-year-old? So, I mean, I can answer that question. Um, we understand the development of the child, but um, one of the best ways to do it is actually through the documentation process that we have. Um, their portfolios are great, but because we do spend a lot of time observing the children, we spend a lot of time figuring out where they started and where they're going um, through that. Process. And how frequently, frequently are the check-in and the So we have a conference at the beginning of the year just to get to know uh, the family and the child, and then we have another conference mid-year. Um, we just had ours, um, and that's more of the teacher explaining um, the development that we see and where, you know, some ideas of where they can go, and also work with the families as to what maybe where families see their child. So it's a very um, 
fluid between families and teachers. We like to work together. And then at the end of the year, we have a portfolio conference, which is child-led. But um, before that, we prepare the children to pick out a few pages that they really like for their portfolio and um, lead the, the parents through the um, portfolio. So the portfolio actually shows a lot of progress. You can actually see it. And those are the formal mm -hmm. check-in times, but in the ELC, we're doing a lot of you know, near daily sometimes check in with parents. You know, a drop off at pick up. Um, when you, you come know. to volunteer. Yeah, yeah. So there are lots of opportunities for that or for scheduling a time to, to chat. You know, I have a lot of parents who will say, Can I talk to you for five minutes one morning next week about, you know, this that's happening with my child and this other child or this that I'm seeing at home that I'm not sure how to deal with. So that happens a lot. Are there any um, organized trips or off-campus activities that the, the classroom goes through? So it really depends on what curriculum emerges in, in the classroom, um, and we try to base little excursions on that. Um, you know, for the little ones, things as close to home as possible are the best. Um, so we've taken trips down to the post office, down to Starbucks. We're going to go to the barber shop. shop. We're going to go to the barber shop. Our children have been playing um, salon since September, so we just finally <laughs> decided to go explore what that looks like. Um, so things that are you know part of their neighborhood, their community that, that resonate hmm. with them. Yeah. Uh, what's your emphasis on um, ongoing teacher training? So there's a, a large emphasis at, at PBS on professional development. Um, there are several different trainings that sort of school-wide, um, we'd like as many people as, as possible to participate in so that we're all on the same page on a number of different things. Um, and then as teachers have specific either needs or wants, that's something that they're working with their grade level directors on um, to do. Uh, the entire ELC team almost last summer went um, to an early childhood conference together up at the Opal School in Portland, Oregon. So as much as possible, we also try to get teachers to go together to things because we believe that's a really important thing for people to, to get that content and that experience together. What is your expectation of parents? Oh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a big one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, high expectations. Uh, do you mean in terms of involvement, in terms of? Um, you know, I think we. Question. <laughs> yeah, I think we recognize that um, we serve families who have a variety of different um, needs and, and wants and availability. Um, we, because young children, there's a lot of, as Stephanie said, development happening. You know, we want to be in communication with parents um, a lot, but whether that's in person or over the phone or over email. Um, but I think we want people who want to partner with us, who are interested in working with us to best support their child. Um, and as we talked about during the presentation, we do have a lot of opportunities for you to come into our classroom, if that works for you. Um, but it, Oh, and we have a blog, I forgot to mention. That's a really important because that's a really good window into your child's day. Um, because the day's really long, it's not you're not going to see the entire day, but it's a good way for you to go home and look at the blog with your child and discuss, you know, I saw this on the blog, or most, it's picture heavy so that your child can actually describe what happened. But there's some also, um, you know, teacher and parent words that you can read that explain <laughs> what we're doing. We've also heard it's very helpful when you ask, what did you do at school today? Nothing. That will provoke a lot of conversation <laughs> in the blog. So. Um, it is 5.30, so uh, I would encourage you to head to the NPR now for the next portion of your evening. Um, but if you do have any lingering questions that you wanted to try to quickly ask, um, we'll hang out here. In fact, Michelle is here now, I'm sure, to usher you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you all for coming, really. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.